Today we're talking about Cinema 4D, Redshift, Substance Painter, and a special plugin to bring them all together. Hi, I'm Aaron Sorensen. Welcome to VFX Central. If you're new, welcome. We talk about VFX stuff, VFX tutorials, tips and tricks, um, and a bunch of other VFX stuff. Also, we create VFX assets, so explosions, flares, uh, magic, all this fun stuff at vfxcentral.net. So go check it out. Before we begin, I just want to um, give a shout out to the live link um, plugin, which we will be using, and I will leave a link in the description below, so go check it out. This is an amazing plugin. Um, it It's going to use all these different uh, render engines and different programs, so Cinema 4D, Maya, Blender, and much, much more. So it's priced uh, really well, and it is well worth the $18. And if you are feeling generous, give them a little bit more because this plugin is a time saver. So let's jump into Cinema 4D and Substance Painter and show you how it works. So here's the project we're working with in Cinema 4D. This is actually from the crash course, um, something we are gonna be using, but I decided to use some of the assets to show you how this works. Um, so if you know anything about Substance Painter, it does not break up objects based on the polygon. So I, if I exported this out, um, it would, it looks at only the UVs, so it needs separate UVs for each object. And a way to break it up is creating each object its own material. So we're just going to do that really quickly. And um, it's good to color each object a unique color so you can tell which one it is. And let me just turn off the um, shadings, or the wire, so we can see the shading. So this is going to be the small middle. So we know what that is. And we'll copy this one and put it on here. And we'll call this um, big mid. Change the color just a little bit. Okay, so once we have these named out properly for each of these materials, we just go to File, Export, OBJ, and we choose a location, so let's just save it right here. And I already have one saved out as an OBJ. So let's jump over to Substance Painter and import that object. To import, just go up to File, New, and then it's gonna ask us for a object. So just click on the Select, make sure you're in the right place, and we have this one right here. And you can choose um, the resolution, and later you can export this out larger, but we're just gonna do this as 2K, and just hit OK. So now let's just rotate around this, and we can see that it named according to what our materials were named properly in here. Now, this isn't going to be a Substance Painter tutorial, and um, I'm gonna kind of uh, rush through some of this uh, basic stuff pretty quick, but if you're just getting into Substance, I'll show you a couple quick things to do before you start painting. So go to your texture set settings and you need to bake these so you, that you get your ambient occlusion, curvature, and all those things so that you can use the procedural materials. So just hit bake mesh and you can choose the resolution. So we're just gonna do this at, um, we'll do it at 2K and it's gonna go through and bake all of these things um, on this object. So I'm just gonna let it do its thing and we're gonna bake not just this one map, but we want to bake all of it. So all of these object objects in this list. So just hit bake all textures. All right, so now we can see that um, all of our materials or er, all of our objects just got baked and um, we can now use this information to um, start texturing. So another cool thing is this button up here, you can solo each your objects and paint on that. So. For this first example, we're just gonna be painting this one and I'm gonna show you some procedural textures quickly. If you go to the smart materials, you can drag in these um, procedural base uh, materials on top of our objects. So let's just grab the copper worn, drag that onto our object. And we can see we already have a really nice looking um, texture and it looks really, really good. And you can go into the layers of um, this and open up 
and kind of toggle on and off some of these um, effects. And you can also um, mess around with the scaling of and the roughness and all of that stuff. So you can look at different angles and kind of see how this is affecting it. So we'd like the roughness pretty high. Um, you can turn on different maps of so metal, normal, if you want some bump in there, some height maps, all that fun stuff. Here's the worn surface, so we could click on this, and they have a, they have special uh, little tools like this mask um, editor. So this will make it so you can uh, increase the um, balance of how much worn you want on that. And we could just keep layering these types of effects on top of it. So we could even do a, a layer above this with a dirt like that, and that just is going to add a net, another cool layer of effects and we can again mess with the scale so you see it'll change some things in there um, with the dirt base let's maybe increase the balance so it's even crazier or less if we want but these are just the cool kind of things that you can do in here uh, another fun thing let's just say we wanted to add a little more roughness that's a little too reflective for us we could just add a new material in between and then go down into our object. And maybe we don't want to do color. We don't want to have the mess with the reflectivity. We just want to paint the roughness. So we could uh, do this tool. And we could actually even import some nice grunge materials. Um, so let's just drag this onto the roughness. And when we paint, you can now see we're going to be breaking up our surface so it doesn't look um, as reflective and we can kind of mess around with some of that fun stuff. Um, we could even, you know, we could change this up even more. I and mean, if we don't like that material, just drag it on here and we can kind of paint around. And that's the fun thing with this is you get to uh, choose how you want to texture your object. So I'm just going to pause this and just throw a couple of materials on some of these um, other objects that we have in our scene really quickly and uh, then we'll send it over to Cinema 40 using Live Link plugin. Okay so we have this thing textured. I just threw a couple of procedural textures. It took me a couple minutes uh, just to show you guys and um, yeah it's looking it's looking pretty cool for us just doing this really quickly but you guys could spend a lot more time make this thing look really really cool. So now what we need to do is send this over to Cinema 4D. And to do that, first we need to head back over to Cinema 4D. And we need to activate the plugin. So once you install the um, Connect plugin, it looks like this. And let me also open up the uh, console. When I hit Start, it should say True, just like it does right there. So once I hit Start, it's going to say Server Status Changed equals True. And so that way you know it's activated and it's working. So back over in Substance, when now we have this plugin over here that we installed, the LiveLink plugin. Just click on this. And we just need to specify a output path. So I selected a folder that I wanted to send this to. And then choose your software. So we're using Cinema 40 and the Render Engine, so Arnold Redshift or um, Octane. We're using Redshift and the resolution. So we're just going to do this at 2K. I think that's going to work. You can also use UDIMs and pack textures and a bunch of other fun stuff. Um, but we're just going to leave these uh, pretty much as default. And you can send current, which is whatever layer you are selected on. Or you can hit send all and it will send all of this over. So that's what we want to do. And so I'm just going to hit send all. And if I click down here and look at the, our log, we can see that it is going through each of these objects and it is baking out everything everything that we have um, on this on these objects. So it's going to bake your um, opacity. We had the emissive on there. We had all these other things. Some of the things we didn't use, and we could have actually turned those off. But it is um, going through each of the um, objects and it is sending them out. So. What it should have done now is sent it over to uh, Cinema 4D. So let's jump over to Cinema 4D, and we can see right here it um, saved us the Redshift um, object or uh, materials for us. So we can see that they're all right here, and 
something that kind of kind of help you guys um, view your objects or your materials a little bit better is to put this in a list mode. So let's just put this in a list so we can make sure that the names are um, all the same and we can make this a little bit bigger. We're just gonna move this up. So now we can see um, which material did which. There um, did, you know, it created these redshift materials for us and we can compare the names and then replace them. But I just wanted to show you guys, so it created the redshift material and when you open the shader graph, the nice thing about this plugin is it plugs everything in for us in Redshift and it does the same in Octane. That way I'm not having to import individual um, files and read them in and connect them into the right uh, spots. It's gonna do it all for you. This is a massive time saver and can really save you um, a lot of time and, and uh, pain. So um, now we just need to replace these. So we can, because the names are going to be the same as the ones down here, it's really easy to see. So I can grab this RS small, it just had the RS in front of it, and we just need to replace it. So I can just drag this, hold down the Alt button, and drag it over that. And when I do that, it's going to replace the um, each um, objects. Oh, we gotta do small mid. So I looked at the wrong thing. So we gotta drag this over, small mid. So hold Alt, drag it over your other material and it will replace it. So we're just, this one will be the small one. So we gotta just find um, RS small. Let's do the other ones really quick. Outer ring, mid ring. Okay, so this one, replace that one. Yep. Okay, so now we have these all connected and it's not gonna look as good in the preview but let's just open up our Redshift um, render view and take a look. And there we go. So we can see now we were able to quickly bring in um, these materials from, from our uh, Substance Painter. And uh, it does such a great job. Let me just turn a little light on so we can see it a little bit better. And there's one more thing I wanna show you guys that's really cool about this. So let's say um, we had some updated uh, materials that we needed, that we changed in Substance. Well, the cool thing is you can go back over to Substance and let's say we wanted to update this uh, mid ring, this one right here. So let's do that quickly. Uh, let's go into the layers. Let's just create a new layer and we are going to paint something on there uh, unique that we will know what we did. Let's change the color to like a really vibrant color. And let's just scribble. So we definitely know that something's changed. So now what we can do is go back over to the Hedgehog plugin and we can just send this current um, one over and it should update. So hit send current. Let's hit render. And there's our scribbles that we made. Right in here. So that's the really cool thing is you can quickly um, update materials and other things. Uh, really fast and I know they're coming out with a new version of this plugin where it allows you to send um, objects over a lot quicker so you don't even have to export. So that's something cool to look forward to um, in the future coming updates of this plugin. Hopefully this tutorial has been helpful for you guys and don't forget to head on over to um, gumroad.com. I'll put the, uh, the link because it's a little uh, crazy with the name and get the Substance Painter Live link. It's really rad. Again, I'm not affiliated. I just want to share good tools that I find so that you guys can, it can make your lives a lot easier. In a practical sense, I just uh, want to let you guys know I have used this when um, I'm working with um, game developers when they have they do a painting on an object and we need to re-render it maybe in um, Redshift or something else. And I can take their Substance projects and send the object and the um, materials all over into whatever uh, 3D package I'm using, C4D, Maya, whatever, and it works perfectly. So just uh, go check out that plugin. It's fantastic. And thanks for uh, watching. 
Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, don't forget to check out the live link plugin in the link down below. And don't forget to subscribe, like, uh, follow all that fun stuff. We're on Instagram. I post some of my own artwork there. Hit, oh yeah, also hit the bell button so that you're notified when we have new content. Hopefully we'll have a lot more of this content coming out more regularly. I also will be at Seagraph, uh, Seagraph 2018. So if you guys are going to Vancouver, come by the Maxon booth and say hello, because I'll be hanging out with the guys at Cinema 40. I'd love to meet some of you guys. Also drop by vfxcentral.net and check out our explosions, our flares, our all these fun things. I use them all the time in my own projects actually, and they really help your renders and other things feel a little more photorealistic. So um, let me know what kind of content you guys wanna see. I'm gonna try to do better at responding and, and creating more of this type of content for you guys. If you like this format, let me know, give me a thumbs up, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, talk to you guys soon on the next tutorial. Take care.